Skylar, call an ambulance right now, please. Well then, I will be heading home. Huh? What are you thinking? Your husband has just collapsed. This is how my mother-in-law Barbara confronted me, and my father-in-law Harvey looked at me with a puzzled expression. I explained everything to defend myself. Harvey, the reason my husband collapsed is because of your wife. My name is Skylar. I'm a 32-year-old homemaker. I married Conrad two years ago. We met at work. He was a junior colleague at the same company, three years younger than me. Skylar, would you like to have dinner sometime? He asked me out first. Oh, you mean with everyone? Sure, that sounds nice. No, I mean just the two of us. He said so, looking straight at me. I had never been approached by a man like that before, and I initially declined. But he kept asking, and I eventually went out to dinner with him. Despite being young, he was calm, and we really clicked. After a few more dates, we started a relationship. A year later, he proposed, and we got married. I was so happy to marry the man I loved. After getting married, I quit my job. Although I received lots of congratulations from my colleagues, I soon began to regret marrying him. Oh, good morning, sweetheart. Um, did you make breakfast? It's ready. He always seemed grumpy in the mornings due to low blood pressure. What's this? Well, it's fried eggs, lettuce salad, and toast. I can see that, duh. I'm talking about the eggs. Why are the eggs runny? Oh, well, I heard that runny eggs are easier to digest. You know, you once said you have a weak stomach. Don't do anything like that. I want my eggs fully cooked. Remember that. Noted. Make it again. What? I can't eat this. Make it again. He then threw the eggs I made into the trash. I'm eating toast, so make it quick. I was stunned. What are you doing? Don't just stand there. His harsh words snapped me out of it, and I quickly remade his eggs. He ate without a word, didn't clean up after himself, and started getting ready for the day. I was shocked by his behavior so soon after our marriage. But I had quit my job and still loved him. I didn't want to get a divorce so easily after being blessed by so many. I thought he was just not a morning person. That's what I told myself and decided to see how things went. In the evenings, he was different. Not grumpy like in the mornings. Oh, fried chicken tonight. Nice. It will be ready in a bit. I've also chilled some beer for you. Great. I will shower first. He was kind and cheerful, just like when we were dating. Dinner was enjoyable, and we had lively conversations. I was relieved, thinking he was just not a morning person. I was careful with breakfast, avoiding anything that upset him, and noting down his preferences to avoid repeats. Gradually, I got used to managing his moods and our distance in the mornings, and became perfect at managing our household. He seemed satisfied with our daily life. He was very kind in the evenings and on his days off, and we shared some quality time together. We were living a happy newlywed life, but it didn't last long. What? A transfer? Yeah, it's still in the city. I see. But the commute will be tough, so let's move. We are renting now. Let's move to a condo near my office. Well, I guess we could do that. I wasn't opposed, and I didn't really like the layout of our current place anyway. So we visited real estate agencies to find a new place. How about this place? Yeah, but it seems a bit expensive. 
but it will make our lives more comfortable, right? Plus, it has a great kitchen. It will be easier for you to cook. That's true. Let's go for it then. And that's how we decided on our new place. The new place was as comfortable as my husband said it would be. The new kitchen was super easy to use and made cooking a lot of fun. My husband's commute was shorter now, so he got to sleep in later, which made him less grumpy in the mornings. I was really glad we chose this apartment. However, a new problem arose. Skylar, I'm here. Barbara, what brings you here all of a sudden? What? Do I need a reason to come here? No, that's not what I meant. Then there's no problem. Can you make me some coffee right away? Saying this, my mother-in-law walked into the living room and plopped down on the sofa. I reluctantly made her coffee and served it to her. Where are the cookies to go with the coffee? Um, I don't have any right now. Why not? You should always have some on hand. Well, but you came over unexpectedly. Oh, stop making excuses. If you don't have any, go out and get some. What are you waiting for? Chop, chop. I yes, right away. I had no choice but to drive out and buy cookies. When I hurried back, she seemed satisfied, enjoying her coffee with the cookies. Next time, be better prepared. Unbelievable. I didn't want her to come over again. Our new apartment was only a 10 minutes walk from my in-laws. So she started dropping by unannounced during the day. That night, I brought it up with my husband. Hey, Conrad, your mom dropped by today unannounced. Oh yeah? What did she want? Nothing really. She just made me go buy cookies and then relax before leaving. She even told me to keep sweets on hand for her next visit. I see. Well, you should do as she says. What? Mom loves sweets. Did you even listen to me? Yeah, so you messed up, right? Be careful next time. I was speechless. Even though my mother-in-law was being unreasonable, he didn't think she was at fault. Instead, he blamed me. Wow, hold on. It's really inconvenient if she keeps coming over like this, you know. Why? Well, she's your mother, and it's stressful. Plus, she criticized my cleaning today and even my taste in interior decor. That's not criticism. It's advice. Listen to her. He was getting visibly irritated, but I couldn't back down on this. I've been doing fine until now, and you never complained. She's nitpicking everything. If she keeps coming over and criticizing like this, it's going to be unbearable. Are you talking shit about my mother? No, that's not what I mean. But her frequent visits are a problem. If my mom wants to come, let her come. I pay the rent here. You don't have the say. He yelled this and locked himself in a room. I was just trying to discuss his mother, but now even he was against me. I was feeling very anxious about our future. And the next day, she came over again. So, Skylar, I heard you upset my son. You're such a terrible daughter-in-law. He cares about me, much more than you do. You are awful for making it sound like I'm the bad one. Now will you make me some coffee? She said this with a triumphant look, turned on the TV, and lay on the sofa. Then, I cooked her lunch cleaned, and did laundry while she nagged me incessantly. You are such a useless daughter-in-law, and you call yourself a woman? You are so incompetent. She kept berating me. She even started staying over for dinner often, criticizing everything about me to Conrad. He began saying terrible things like, 
Maybe it was a mistake to marry you. He started treating me terribly because of his mother, becoming as grumpy as he used to be in the mornings. Those days continued, and I reached my limit. As a housewife, would I just be scorned and treated like a slave by them both? It was around that time when a friend suddenly sent me a photo. Isn't this your husband? I was shocked when I saw the photo. In broad daylight, my husband was walking arm in arm with an unknown woman. No way. Normally, a man wouldn't walk arm in arm with a woman other than his wife. This had to mean he was having an affair. I immediately hired a detective agency to investigate, and evidence of my husband's infidelity quickly accumulated. Unbelievable. He berated me so much, yet he was the one having an affair. I was determined to make him pay and started preparing for a divorce. First, I needed to secure a job to support myself after the divorce. I started going to job interviews at various companies during weekdays, and eventually, I landed a new job. I also found an apartment for myself. And arranged to move out soon. In the midst of all this, my unsuspecting husband announced, "My mom's birthday is coming up, so we are having a dinner party at her place." I didn't want to go, but I thought this might be my last interaction with my in-laws. I decided it was better to quietly attend than to refuse and deal with my husband's anger. That weekend. Conrad and I went to his parents' house. Harvey, my father-in-law, greeted me warmly. It's been a while, Skylar. Hi, it's so great to see you again. He was the only reasonable person in my husband's family, but he often traveled for work and wasn't home much, so I rarely saw him except on occasions like this. I prepared a lot of delicious food today. Barbara said this as she laid out a feast on the dining table. Honey, this is amazing. You are suddenly outdone yourself. The men were impressed, and Barbara looked proud. If you only saw this scene, you'd think we were a happy family. But knowing my husband and Barbara's true nature, I couldn't help but feel uneasy. I watched the food she prepared very carefully. She served it on large platters, and everything on the dining table seemed untouched. I waited until the men started eating before I touched any food. The food was delicious and seemed fine. I thought maybe this would end without incident, but then my husband and Barbara started whispering in the kitchen. They had mentioned preparing cake and tea. Maybe they were planning something. I observed them even more closely. Then, I saw her put some powdery substance into one of the teacups. What could that be? It was undoubtedly intended for me. They were smirking. I wondered how I could get out of this situation. They started serving the tea and cake at the table. Then Barbara left to call her husband. That's when I got an idea. I made a phone call to a specific person. Conrad looked at his phone, which was in his pocket, and said, "I need to take this work call." Before stepping away, I quickly switched my tea with his. He returned with a puzzled look. "What's wrong? That was a quick work call." "Oh yeah, just a quick check." He tried to play it off. But he didn't know that the call was from me. I had changed the name and icon of my app to his mistress' name and picture. He thought the call was from her. It was just a temporary ruse to get him away from the table, and it worked. Soon after, my in-laws came back to celebrate Barbara's birthday with cake. The cake seems untampered with, so I ate it. I pretended everything was normal. And sipped my tea slowly. My husband and mother-in-law watched me with marks, probably expecting something to happen soon. 
But after a few minutes, the unexpected happened to my husband. Oh, it hurts! He suddenly collapsed, clutching his stomach. What's wrong, Conrad? What's happening? Conrad, are you okay? They were both shocked. My husband, in a faint voice, murmured, Why me? Barbara rushing to my husband, turned to me and said, Skylar, call an ambulance right now. I was astounded at her audacity after she had said something up herself. Well then, I will be heading home. What? What are you thinking? Your husband has just collapsed. She confronted me like that. Harvey looked puzzled, said, I recall an ambulance. He hurried to call, and then turned to me asking, Why would you say something like that? He's your husband. Are you going to abandon him? Exactly. You heartless woman. The worst daughter-in-law ever. She took advantage of her husband's accusation to berate me even more. I explained everything to defend myself. Harvey, the reason my husband collapsed is because of your wife. What? He was shocked. Barbara, looking flustered, said, What are you talking about? I ignored her reaction and continued explaining to Harvey. I saw her putting some powdery substance into one of the teacups. That cup was then placed in front of me. I had a bad feeling, so I switched it with my husband's cup. Then, he collapsed like this. Barbara, did you put a large amount of laxative in it? She looked shocked as I said this. Harvey glared at her and demanded an answer. Is that true? Why would I do something like that? She's lying. Then let's call the police and have them investigate. The police? Yes. Intentionally administering a laxative can be considered assault. It's a serious matter that could involve the police. I didn't know that. She inadvertently slipped up. Harvey and I didn't miss her admission. You just admitted to putting the laxative in. Why would you do such a thing? Well, um... Harvey, your wife and son have been bullying me terribly. What? I have recordings of some recent incidents on my voice recorder. Please listen to them later. You will understand how they've been harassing me and why they might have spiked the tea. He sighed in disbelief. She then turned her anger on me. How did you manage to switch the cups? My son was supposed to be watching. That was easy. I called him, pretending to be his mistress. What? My son is having an affair? She clearly didn't know. Harvey was speechless. I have pictures as evidence. I plan to divorce him after today's meal. But I didn't know you two were planning something so awful. I'm glad I was cautious. Don't worry. I will make sure you both face the consequences. I left their house, hearing Harvey's angry voice at Barbara. An ambulance passed by, likely taking my husband to the hospital. A few hours later, Harvey contacted me. He apologized for what happened at the birthday party and discuss the future. He had scolded them and ensure that Conrad would agree to a divorce and pay alimony for the affair. He also said I could claim compensation for the emotional distress caused by their abuse. I gratefully demanded everything I was owed, including compensation from the mistress. Harvey, affected by the incident, decided to divorce Barbara. Having never worked, she ended up moving in with my ex-husband, where she found the mistress already living, leading to constant arguments between them. Conrad, burdened with hefty alimony, higher rent, and the cost of supporting three adults, was worn out both physically and mentally. With no allies at work due to his affair, he lived in isolated misery. Kalma is a bitch. As for me, 
I successfully moved to a new place and started a new life. I'm working hard at my new job and enjoying the comfort of my new home. For now, I'm focusing on my career, planning to start studying for qualifications to further advance in my field.